Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final match of this 10th Seamers World Championship in underwater rugby. We see the two finalists for the male division preparing for the final game. In white, we see the Norwegian team, the former world champion, and in blue, playing Germany, the contender. As many of you will remember, we have seen the same match four years ago. Not the same match, but we've seen the Norwegian and German teams battling each other for the title of world champion. Right now, the Germans are already in, in a circle, focusing on the team, while the Norwegians have been examined again by the referees. We've seen that one, one player of the Norwegian team was a little slippery, so they made him wash his back again. So we've seen a good, good game from a good, good um, service from the referees in this tournament. Referees um, have been here all the time. At the good, good, uh, we have, have not seen any major disputed decisions. A couple of penalties that were disputed, but I think overall nobody actually um, disputed them. And so the lineup of the German and the Norwegian team. I think we look forward to an exciting match. Both teams are extremely strong. They're extremely well conditioned. There's they have speed, they have a lot of experience playing international tournaments. But also both teams had, w it wasn't very easy for either of them to get to this final. Both won their semifinals, the Norwegians against Sweden and the Germans against Colombia in tight matches. The Germans could score the final goal only because of a penalty and Norway only got one counter strike in because Sweden slipped. Sweden didn't pay attention and um, Eva Björnrem, the um, head, the coach player of the Norwegian team, was able to score the important goal that made them come here to the finals. Right now? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to present you the German national team. Number one, Valentin Dreseli. And we start with a roll call each... Number three, Matthias Ger Otten. The German team is called one Number by Number four, Martin Schottmüller. <laughs> Number and five, Jens Stingel. Huge fan base also in the stands. You can see a lot Number of six, Christian Förschler. In support of the German team. Number seven, Sebastian Lange. <laughs> Number eight, Markus Heckrath. Number, se uh, number nine, Sven Hofbauer. <laughs> number ten, Jochen Schottmüller. <laughs> number eleven, Dennis Pahl. <laughs> number thirteen, Christian Staubach. <laughs> number fourteen, Christian Browald. <laughs> number fifteen, Andy Weisenberger. Number 69, Ralf Gandlau. And with the number 12, our captain, Lukas Tada. The head coach, Wilhelm Nier. And the, the coach assistant, Roland Wiesner. Thank you very much. We just finished the um, lineup of the German team. Um, and the captain is again Lukas Tadde, who was able to and the Norwegian team? win the penalty against number one Colombia in the semi-finals. And number two, Håkon Emil Sesta. Now we hear the lineup, the names of the number Norwegian three, players. Fritz Eilertsen. Okay. 
Number five, Jon Reidar Hegdal. Number six, Jørgen Hjus Ulvestad. Number seven, Iver Bjørnerem. Number eight, and the captain, Eivind Hjus. Number nine, Jermen Hoem. Number ten, Erik Måstad. Number eleven, Marius Bunes. Number twelve, Trond Helge Lillevik. European teams often have a follow-up Number thirteen, Geir Magnus Strand. Number fourteen, Fåkon Valderhaug. Here we have... Um, for example, Norwegian number 15, Marius Kåre. And they have a number 20 player. That's it. Number Whereas 20, Yasmin Dervishevich. Whereas other teams um, are and more... And the trainer, Iver Bjørnerem. ...in the numbering. The official seamless rules for underwater rugby allow a player to have any number... And referees for this game on deck, Lars Olsson in the water, Kajsa Lindman, Jyrki Mutta. ...to have players numbered 1 to 15. And many other... Um, teams have players with pet numbers such as 66 or 88 or 99 or 70 or whatever they, they think has a special meaning for them. So it would be interesting to see if that will change in the classical countries too. And now the German captain jumped with the German flag into the water. The Norwegian captain is already in the water. They're swimming to exchange flags. A gesture of the sports nature of this event. And to compete at this highest level, at the World Championship, and even so at, this, at, the, at the final match, the final that will decide who will become a world champion is, um, is, is an honor to represent a country. And So it's important to also see that in the end we are all athletes and we will play fairly and do whatever the rules allow us to win this game. Bueno, todo listo para empezar la gran final so masculina heard, heard the, de rugby subacuático. Y can hear the determination. You can hear, we are world champion, we were world champion, and after this game we will be world champion again. But it takes more than determination. We have to see how they can put that into practice against the German team. Both teams now have six players in the water, but they're still preparing for the start of this tense final in underwater rugby of a world championship. Yes, sir. Say who got this alagua. The, the referee is asking who, if both teams are ready. And there we go. There we go. Both teams quickly. Oh, it's, it's the Norwegian team that gained the ball. Norway playing white against Germany playing in blue. And with an interesting move, that the, uh, but now again we have the Germans advancing to the goal. Two German players uh, um, pressing to the goal. That's, that, that's an un unexpected event that we advanced so quickly with the German team. But no dan real danger for the Norwegians. The defense was there on time. You've seen in, in the very beginning of the game, when both teams were playing, the Norwegian player who first reached the ball made a long pass to the back. They know that both teams at this level are more or less equally matched in terms of speed. So it is unlikely that either team will just go in and swim through with the ball. So the move to quickly grab the ball and pass it back is um, a good strategy that Norwegians employed here. The Germans are rotating the ball around in the corner, in the deep corner, in the safe corner, the corner that is not facing the exchange lane. 
And the same as the G German team, they're rotating right now not too close to the ball, to the goal. My impression is that they do that again because they because they want to uh, want to lure out some of the players. Oh, Germany is close to the goal. There's a defender. Um, they're on the ground. Germany is pressing here. Germany is pressing here. It's it's quite impressive how how much pressure the German team was able to to put in these first minutes, and they're still going. But the Norwegian defense is strong. As from here, I haven't seen any hole in the defense yet. But with any team, if you are able to put a lot of pressure over a sustained period of time, it is only a question of time when you either lose the ball, which is a big danger, or actually score. The third option is that you actually have a, a, um, a penalty in your favor, because at some point the goalkeeper or a defender will commit a, a foul that is worth a penalty. We have seen it in this tournament a few times. If you sustain pressure, um, at some point probably you will get a, um, a penalty. Um, now we see an advantage um, in favor of Germany. Um, the Norwegians are again, um, they're playing defensive, and, and they should, as we've seen, the Germans really want to score. So they're having a goalkeeper and a defender lying there. And Germany is waiting, waiting, they're rotating the ball. They're, they're no patient right now, but no, the patience is not very long. They really, they really want to score. And the ball fell down. Norway recovered the ball. Now it's a free throw in favor of Norway. Norway's in possession, and now the game has started. For checking, it seems like Germany recovered the ball. The Norwegian attacker did not have the ball tucked in. He was carrying it in a long arm. The German um, defender or a forward probably was just able to be able to snatch it. Of course, in a game at that level, you cannot afford to do any major mistake. You have to play safe. You have to keep the ball because any loss of the ball can mean a goal for the other team. As of now, we've seen an exciting match. It's, um, Germany had more possession. Germany had a couple of good attacks. They were aggressively attacking the goal of Norway. But nothing is sad about this game. Oh, Norwegian, Norwegian player getting in. There's a lot of players. You can see the defense is strong, attack is strong. Who will keep the ball? Oh, and still Germany has the, has possession. The Germany has possession, and the referees called um, interruption. I see a timeout sign. The no no way us timeout, and we will see a penalty. The referees. And they can come up and down. They can breathe in between. 
but um, a lot of them will only attack, maybe go up once and go down again. We have seen a lot of, sh um, there are two basic techniques. One is you attack from the, from the top, you just swim from, from the surface straight down. The other one is you try to get underneath as soon as possible. Of course, every time you're underneath the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper is just uh, doing a lid covering the goal with his shoulders, it's the best chance. And Norway is very good and very effective at, at putting those in. We okay, now we see both, both players are ready. Both, both are ready. And the judge, s okay, 45 seconds are starting now. The goalkeeper went down quickly. He knows, oh okay, and the German is coming quickly too. He's holding the hand uh, away. The more something, oh, Germany goes on up again. I think it was too quickly. He should have probably struggled a little more. But it's a psychological advantage that the attacker has. He's coming from the top. And... And it is a goal. Germany scored the first goal. I have not the confirmation. Yes, yes, I see the confirmation of the judge. So German, Germany got this. Gol del jugador número 7, blanco. Okay. Marcador, gorros blancos de Noruega, 1, gorros azules, Alemania, 0. Wow. Norway, 1-0. Norwegian game. Um, Ovid Nihus, or sorry, um, Iver Bjornerem himself, the captain who was holding the... I'm 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 sorry for the information. I I, I really got that wrong. Norway actually, it was Ivar Björnrem who put this goal in, so it's one zero for Norway. Um, who um, Ivar Björnrem, the captain, who is known for a very effective way of putting in goals, and um, normally he does it quicker. So I'm actually surprised he he wasn't able to go under the goalkeeper faster but um, so a 1-0 lead for Norway because of the captain slash coach um, success in, in, in realizing this penalty shot. Okay, the German team is attacking again. And we have to see how much they can do, how much pressure they can put in more to, to, to bring, bring them back into the game in terms of scores. Because this was an important psychological moment for the Norwegian team who was in a lot of pressure from the, from the German attack. And... I think now the, the Norwegians probably have a lot of more air, they have more, and more, more strength in the water just because they're leading. And the Germans have to show how hungry they are. They have to show how much hunger they have to win this title of the world champion. 
and you can see that they really want it. They're going in. They want to show that they can make the goal. A and now, no, it's a penalty shot. A a now we see a penalty shot, and let me confirm again the same the same reason. Goal in the goal cargado al equipo blanco uh, showing, uh, por sujetarse con los hombros de la cancha. This time, a Norwegian player, the Norwegian goalkeeper, had the sh goal, the shoulder in the goal, and Germany will get the chance to equalize. They will get a chance to get even through a penalty shot. Cobra el jugador número 12 azul. Players are getting ready and it starts. Again, the German player has 45 seconds to put the ball into the basket and he's is taking from the top. He's protecting the ball he's on on the floor. He's not getting around the goalkeeper. Oh, and almost, that was almost a goal, but um, then he almost lost it, and now he again is at the surface breathing. Let's see how much air, how, m how much air the goalkeeper has. And, and there's not much time left for, the goalkeeper is doing a good job and keeping the German attacker uh, away. And, and the, and save that. And a very good job, and a very good job. The, the German goal, uh, the, the Norwegian goalkeeper was able to save this. Final del penalty. Norman, uh, Norwegian, uh, the number, number, number one. So the, the goalkeeper who saved this was Bartolo. Cuando el penal es tapado, eh, se inicia very, con very la pelota en la mitad de la piscina. He was fighting, he was keeping the German um, attacker at a distance, and the German attacker was not able to overcome that. We've seen... And the, the captain, Lukas Tada, of the German team, was the one who was um, trying to... Uh, was 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 executing the penalty and Lucas Tadi is very experienced, a very experienced player. He was already the captain of the German team for the last World Championship in 2011 at least. Um, but unfortunately, here he was for Germany. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to put the goal in. But that means anything is possible in this game. A 1-0 lead does not mean that Norway will win this game yet. But they have a heads up, and they are again advancing towards the German goal. Now we have an, an, an a free throw in favor of Norway. A free throw at the half, uh, half of the pool, the middle of the pool. And the game has started again. Bueno, eh, eh, Noruega mantiene la ventaja con el gol de penalti que anotó a medida del primer tiempo. Eh, eh, Alemania tuvo la oportunidad de empatar también por medio de un penalti, pero desafortunadamente el, el arquero noruego logró atajarlo. Así que bueno, eh, sigue Noruega con la ventaja, la oportunidad de, de defender de defender el, el campeonato obtenido hace cuatro años. Quedan seis minutos del primer tiempo. Eh, está Alemania volcado al ataque. Eh, pero bueno, vemos que apenas Noruega logra recuperar el balón, nada rápidamente es el otro lado. Y sabemos el poderío que tiene Noruega a la hora de atacar, así que lo mejor para Alemania va a ser recuperar el balón rápido y volver a llevarlo a la portería de Noruega. Vemos como los jugadores noruegos entran con gran fortaleza, logran ganar espacios y se nota lo bien que se conocen porque bueno, hacen, podemos ver los pases que hacen a los pases que hacen eh, hay veces sin siquiera buscar al jugador, ya saben dónde va a estar. 
se da mucho daño jugando juntos y esto se demuestra siempre en el desempeño en el agua. Vemos que nuevamente Alemania recupera el, el balón y vuelve a lanzarse al ataque, pero sin mucho, sin mucho resultado. Uh, the ball, the ball dropped. The German player recovered it. It's at the free throw. Free throw at um, a, a three quarter of the pool in favor of Germany against Norway. And I think that the German player like was lying there under the basket too. And now they called a foul by Germany, leading to a free throw for Norway. At the half pool now, Norway in possession of the ball. Okay. Five minutes left. Five minutes left. Restan cinco minutos del primer periodo. Final match in the ten. Five minutes left. Dimas World Championship, and we're seeing a lot of action on the German goal. And the Norwegian, no, Norway picks, put a lot of pressure on the German goal, but they released the pressure already. That, that looked like a tough situation again. And what Germany does need in terms of uh, psychological disadvantage is another goal right now. A one point lead by Norway is, I would not say insignificant, but it can be overcome with a concentrated play. And uh, one goal per for either team is um, in the cards at any moment. So um, when I actually ta I talked briefly to both coaches before the match, and uh, Willem Nier, the head coach for the German team, said they, they, their team was just trying to have fun, to play well. Now we see a counter strike by Germany. Germany is advancing at the bottom of the pool. Um, But to like the defender and the forward, uh, they and another forward coming in from the top, German player, he still has the ball. So, um, but that was definitely good forechecking. And the Norwegians are known for their aggressive and very effective forechecking. And again, so they, they got the ball. They were trying to swim a counter strike, and two German players intercepted or not. And again, Germany has the ball. That was a not a very nice pass, but three Norwegian players down there with this kind of level of concentration that the Norwegian team is showing right now, it would be difficult to put in a quick goal. They're there, they know they cannot afford to, to lose um, the concentration for a moment. A German player now lingering around the goal, disturbing the defense, making the defense stay there for a while. And Norway has control of the ball, but it's not f flowing freely. German forechecking is, is, is strong. They know they cannot afford to get a second goal in right before the end of the second, at uh, the first, first half. It's a, it's a quick game, we see. A lot of swimming, a lot of um, very good forechecking, a lot of Um, but it's a clean game. We haven't s the, the, the fouls we've seen that led to penalties were due to both times to a shoulder in the goal, which is a serious infraction, but it's not an infraction that is not against the sport. And it's not an attack against a player. And Germany was trying to score, but um, the Norwegians were strong at having the defense lying there. The Germans playing very close to the goal. They're having passes around the goal, which um, is dangerous. But and then now you know, like the um, Norwegians again have the possession of the ball. And they're advancing. Um, y in the beginning, in the first, I would say five minutes, you could d definitely see Germany was dominating the game. They're more, more aggressive. They're more around the goal. But in the last couple of minutes, I've seen the Norwegian game uh, team finding the game more. They're advancing. They. Um, They have more possession. I wouldn't say more possession than the Germans, but definitely more possession than we've seen in the first couple of minutes. Uh, 
and the t inter interrupted the game was interrupted the players were so so engaged in the game that they didn't hear it so it's a free throw in favor of Norway Norway is getting a free throw se hace una advertencia al jugador para que dé espacio para el cobro but you can see Norway is now trying to like be more cautious because the forechecking is relentless for the Germans um, and they really have to see where they pass to. Uh, Norway still has the ball and they're, ha leading, ha they're having the ball often with one hand. So these are very experienced players who don't have to protect the ball very, very well. They have a good overview. But we have also seen with the fast game that the Germans show, it's, it's a danger having a ball unprotected. And a long pass somewhere to a Norwegian player in the bulk. We, we don't see really what's happening. See the, the ball Ultimo is minuto up with a lot of del primer periodo. It. It's just one German goalkeeper and the ball is flowing. Two, two, oh, that was a long pass. Minute left. To a, to a Norwegian player on the ground. That could have been dangerous, but I think the Germans evaded that for a moment. One minute left in this, in this game. And the Germans have possession. Try to counter strike, but grabbed by a Norwegian player. Again, the free throwing Germans are advancing, but the uh, defenders coming in. I think the defender even grabbed the ball. Norway has the ball. That's that's the danger when you really want to score, and you focus on the goal and not on the person intercepting you. But Germany shows heart. Germany does not don't don't feel beat. They don't show that they're beaten. They really really want this goal. And I think they won it before the halftime finishes. And now again, Norway is ad advancing. Al finalizar el primer periodo, marcador: Gorros Azules de Alemania uno. And perdón. The first half is over. Gorros Azules de Alemania cero. Gorros Blancos de Noruega, uno. You just joined us recently. We're watching the, the end of the first half the a score. Division. Germany, between Germany one. and Ardon. Norway. I'm sorry. Norway Zero. Playing blue, Norway, playing Norway one. For the title of world champion in underwater rugby. Um, a score of one to zero in favor of Norway. Norway was um, given a penalty shot because the German goalkeeper had his shoulder in the basket, in the goal, to avoid being lifted up. And um, Ibia Brennison was able to, to deliver. He was able to put the ball in. This led to this 1-0 advantage of Norway. When, when Germany had a chance to, to equalize and because they were given the same opportunity penalty shot because of the shoulder in the goal. Um, the, the German captain, Lukas Tada, um, was not able, to unable, not able to overcome his opponent, Bart Inge Petersen, the goalkeeper for the, of the Norwegian team. But no, nothing is set in stone for this, this match. We'll have another 15 minutes of, uh, of an exciting game of two equally matched very strong, very fast, very well conditioned teams. And we can all look to another 15 minutes of excitement after five minutes of break.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to see the start of the second half of the final final in the men's division and for this tenth underwater rugby world championship hosted here in the beautiful city of Cali, Colombia. We see two teams in white playing the former world champion Norway against the contender Germany playing in blue. We're entering the second half with an advantage for the Norwegian team 1 to 0. But a one point lead at this level is not a comfortable lead and we have 15 minutes to see what of the, which of the teams will be able to secure one or more goals. It's the Norwegians were advancing now. The Norwegians got got control of the ball and Already a German player got control, but there's an interruption and it's an advantage for Germany. A free throw on behalf of Ge for Germany. Executed at the middle of the pool. The referee is starting the game now. And in the first half, in the beginning of the first half, we saw a lot of action around the goal of the Norwegians. And I'm sure they would like to repeat that with a different result. We, we're repeating a free throw, Germany against Norway. Germany is rotating the ball well. You've seen that for a long time. They were in possession. They were able to get close to the goal. They were trying to score, and they still kept the ball, which is um, something that is not easy in rugby, where the defenders and the forwards can easily snatch the ball from you if you're too close to the goal. But as of now, this has not resulted in a goal. When I talked to Willem Nier, the head coach of the German team before the game, he said um, that his players really want to have fun. We're seeing a counter striker right now. I see um, at least two, oh, uh, two, two Norwegian players started. And then this was one, and now again he found a partner to pass to. The, um, I also spoke to the Norwegian head coach, who is also one of the best players of the, um, of the team, Iva Bjørnsen, who put was able to put in the 1-0 that led to the lead of his team. And he, he said it was, it's he, he, he anticipated a tough match, he anticipated a close match, but he was very confident. He said, well, we've played Germany many times and we've always won. So he's relying on historicity, on the history of the two teams. But um, as we all know, history can change. So let's see if Germany c is able to rewrite the history of the two countries' um, teams in the past. Um, a free throw um, close to the German goal. The Norwegians have the ball. And uh, they execute it. Oh, it's Norway, and and again, the forechecking of the German team is good. They're very aggressive, very, very strong in 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 trying to force Norwegians to make a mistake when passing. They don't let them f swim around, but they're also ca cautious of not getting another goal in. So you see, now they have not only goalkeeper but a defender lying underneath the goalkeeper. It is very dangerous to not have a defender there, especially with a team as strong. Um, as, as Norway, where a single player can, uh, in many instances, um, lift the goalkeeper. Germany got possession of the ball. Germany is striking back. There's a player on the bottom of the pool following the person swimming in midwater. Germany got close to the goal, but, but not close enough. The, the, the defense was coming in. Oh, and now Germany trying to get over the goalkeeper from the top of the goalkeeper. But as I can see, to not with success as of now.
Uh, a lot of action around the goal. A lot of action around the goal of, an of, of Norway. And now Germany pulled out again a little. They want to see if there many there's a mistake of the, of the Norwegian team. I think a Norwegian player was able to snatch the ball and then two German players were on him right away. So It's a game at the surface, playing at the surface, and Norway get possession. Now we're playing down to the play at the bottom, but uh, for, for, for checking by the Germans. The referee interrupted the game, and it is a free throw for Germany against Norway. <laughs> Holding against ball, uh, 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 without the ball. The referee signals that a Norwegian player was holding a German player without the German player having the ball. Germany's execu executed the ball, the, the free throw. Both, each of these teams is giving all they can to actually win this world championship. We know all of, both of them really want to be, become world champion. Germany ha had his titles, but, but they really want to win right now. And Norway, um, at the club level, Molde, the, the best club in, in Norway, has won all major championships in the last couple of years. They played very well in the EuroLeague, almost undefeated. And um, they played the Champions Cup, the club tournament that every year held in um, Berlin in the last couple of years at least. Um, and they won, won this tournament for, I think, the last six or seven years. So, so even, even though they still want to show the world that we're a small country, but we're a country of strong rugby players. And let's see if Germany can, can, can impose their own game. That's another thing that Willem Nier told me. He said, OK, we're trying to play our own game. We're trying to have fun in the water. We're trying to really play and just um, enjoy winning. But as of now, they're not winning yet. They're playing a good game. Both teams are extremely strong. They're playing an amazing game. But um, if Johnny wants to win, they have to put a goal in. There's no way around that. And they're trying, they're trying to score a goal right now. Uh, they're securing the ball at the surface. There's one player which is floating too much at the bottom of the Germans, I think. Because, uh, yeah. see, he was, he was too much at the bottom, so, so he was not a good target to be passed to. The Swedish player was there at the pass before the German player at the bottom could reach it. Um, and uh, we are playing at a deep pool here. Restan pool and Kali, 8 minutos 30 minutes, del segundo period. Which is win within the um, regular dimensions of a pool, which can range from 350 to 5 meters. Um, that is about 12 and a half feet to 15 feet. Tiempo solicitado um, por el equipo um, blanco. I think the, the, the Norwegian team is asking for a timeout right now. So players can breathe for one minute before they are entering the water again. And because it's a deep pool, Teams that are not used to play in a deep pool sometimes have difficulties in adjusting to the differences in the depth. Depth doesn't mean only that you have to dive deeper and may have less air. It also means your timing is different. In a pool that is a meter deeper than a pool you normally use to play, you need longer time, more time to actually reach the bottom. And that can lead to... Um, uh, challenges in the coordination. If you know where you have to sub, you have to know where, when you intercept somebody in a cut, when you want to, want to intercept somebody who is, who is trying to swim a counter strike against you. So, so it depends on how deep the pools are the German players and the Norwegian players play in. But I have the feeling that Germans don't, don't play in a deep pool, so they are at a slight disadvantage in terms of the timing here.
We haven't seen this disadvantage much, but um, the last pass here with the gem play was at the bottom while the ball was handled at the surface may be an indication for that. The ball can be passed faster than a player can swim at small distances. If you have longer distances, a player can swim faster, which is why long passes underwater rugby are dangerous. And the, the Norwegians are pressing towards the German. Poniendo eh, mucho esfuerzo en el ataque, eh, está tratando de buscar por todos los medios empatar el partido. Ya se empieza a agotar el tiempo y Noruega se está acercando cada vez más a, a su segundo campeonato mundial eh, seguido. Ya veremos qué puede, qué puede lograr el equipo alemán eh, en estos últimos minutos. Está el equipo, todo el equipo femenino alemán es apoyando a su equipo masculino. Esperemos que este aliento les sirva para, para lograr eh, anotar. Vemos ahora al equipo noruego atacando, pero eh, las, las alemanas recuperan de muy buena manera la bola. Van a, al contragolpe muy rápido, pero dos jugadores noruegos lo detienen, lo sueltan y sigue. Le hace, eh, llega un compañero a ayudarlo. Va para el ataque por el lado izquierdo, eh, trata de agarrar el portero sin mucho éxito. Al otro lado espera otro alemán por el balón, pero Noruega recupera el balón de nuevo. Five minutes to go. So five minutes to finish the World Championships in 2015 in Cali. Uh, Germany is with the ball. They have just five minutes left to, to try to score. But Norway is leaving no chances for, for Germany in the attack. Uh, for people who are not watching, uh, Germany had the chance to score with a penalty shot in, in the first half, but yeah, goalkeeper did a good job and uh, Germany couldn't score. The goal for Norway was uh, with a penalty shot as well. Uh, we can see. Restan cinco minutos del segundo periodo. Five minutes left of the second half. Uh, both teams are putting a lot of pressure. 
the three quarters of pool. Uh, so yeah, when Norway takes the ball, Germany take it uh, uh, again. So, so it's a, it's been a, a a tough match, really tight, but with not many chances to score, especially for Germans who. has the control of the possession, but still don't have uh, a success uh, on the attacks. Referee called. Free throw for Germany. Let's see what they have prepared for this f throw. It's a near the basket, so they are in attack position. So Germany keep the pressure on the Norwegian basket. Restan three minutes of the game. Three minutes left to play. Three minutes left. Match is almost uh, gone. Two minutes and a half left. Ladies and gentlemen, the last two and a half minutes of this final match in the men's division of the 10th World Championship in underwater rugby. Restan dos minutos del segundo period. Two minutes. We just two minutes heard. left. Four minutes. So the question is, will the German team be able to equalize? If they, if they manage, but you can see they're putting everything in. They're going in with full strength, exposing the ball. But now they're getting, if they're getting into a clench, of course, if the Norwegian team gets to the ball, then we can hold on to them, hold to it. So at the surface, we don't want to see playing game at the surface. Now a foul was called in favor of Norway. Norway will have a free throw from the middle line. Both teams showing a lot of soul right now. They're really putting everything in. Both teams want to be world champion. Right now, if Norway can deny Germany the goal in the last next two minutes, they will be again the world champion. But will they? And very forechecking, you see two, two German players attacking the person leading, carrying the ball. Germany knows that it's about time. And a Norwegian player moving the ball to the side, not to the blind side. We've seen a few times, not in this game, in other games, where players have been attacked from the blind side. From Ultimo the minuto. Game. No, we do not want that to happen. One Last minute. The last 60 seconds in which Germany had the chance to equalize and to get closer to the goal to becoming world champions. But will they be able to do that? It's still, the ball is still in possession of the Norwegian team. 
It's still in the corner of the German goal. This is not a place where they want the goal to be. But, German, but Germany got possession. And now every second counts. This is exciting. Will Germany be able in the th last couple of seconds of the game actually put their... But no, it's, it's again, it's again, Norway is advancing. Norway is... Norway is advancing. And again, Norway is getting a free throw for holding without ball. That does not look good for the German team. So it can be that Norway is becoming the champion, the world champion in our world of rugby in this year, 2015, here in Cali, because they were able to um, realize a penalty shot against the German goalkeeper. And the game is starting again. Now, all, the only thing that the Norwegian team has to do is to hold on. I hear the countdown. The, the stands are counting down. And that's it. The, the game is over. Officially, it is over now. Germany lost to Norway 1-0. to zero. And it was a very good game. Germany probably dominated over large stretches of the game. They were able to do a lot of pressure, to develop a lot of pressure around the the goal of them. Al finalizar el encuentro, el marcador es gorros blancos de Noruega uno, gorros azules de Alemania cero. You get an award for scoring. And at the end of the game, Norway one, Germany zero. To have a penalty. First, Norway used the chance successfully and put the world champion Norway. Whereas in the next situation where Germany was awarded a penalty, the German captain Lukas Tada was unable to overcome um, um, Bart Inge Petersen. And it was a good game. I don't think any team can go out and say, well, um, I knew we won, we would win. Um, any, any team could have won. And both, both have played in, in a really good game. Por favor, apenas eh, para el público, passes, apenas termine este protocolo del himno nacional, eh, pasamos a las galerías para really eh, la premiación.